we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. I gotta ask you this. Seem like you're trying to divide Texas and California. I am. I'm trying to divide the world against California. Not just Texas, Oklahoma, Mississippi, Alabama. I'm trying to divide black people against the Crips and the Blood. And if that's California, so be it. But it's against the Crips and the Bloods. I ain't said nothing about Oakland. I ain't said nothing about San Diego. I said something about Crips and Bloods. They stood with the Asians against me. I remember that. They stood with them with the Asians against me. I mean, done it in more than one video. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to turn the all 50 states against California if I can. If them niggas come to our states, don't come with that Crip and Blood shit, nigga. You niggas, when you niggas leave outside that motherfucking California state, nigga, be on your best behavior, nigga. Leave that shit. Don't come here with that shit. We gonna have stricter laws for California niggas. I got a nigga rob them every time they come down here. Because he thought they was bad and tough. Till one day during a drug transaction, they was talking to big California talk and a little Texas talk. And he said, I'm robbing this nigga this time. And what he told me, he said, man, when you put them guns in them niggas faces, nigga, they cooperate too. They don't want to die. They talk that crip for die. They don't want to die, my nigga. Them niggas get naked just like everybody else when you tell them to. They don't want to die. They talk that shit. Wow. So, nah, homie, so they, this is the first time ever in history that anybody have ever stood up to the Crips and the Bloods. And with, it, I could say I've never heard that. Before. Without fear. Without fear. Without fear. Wow. I know cowards. I know cowards running packs. Wow. Yeah. That's some real talk, man. Charleston White, man. Hey, man. So, man, um, I think the Nipsey thing, they keep throwing that out there in a way to where to try to make that the narrative. Man, to say, fuck Nipsey. That's what they keep yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. I don't give a damn about the dead. How the fuck all of you disrespectful motherfuckers go wake up every day and throughout your day disrespect the living, hate the living, but you so honor the dead whom you don't know. You disrespectful to your mother. You disrespectful to your neighbor. You disrespectful to the kids whom you walk past with your sagging pants and your dick and your ass showing. You disrespectful to the women at the gas station when they walking into the store, you cussing on the phone or you and your homeboy talking what you're talking. Y'all some very disrespectful motherfuckers in your daily lives. But you got so much respect for the dead. Wow. You shouldn't honor the dead. They say you can't speak on the dead. They a lying motherfucker. You know that little dash in between your birthday and the date you die, that dash give everybody authority to speak on you. That's why that dash is there, nigga, how you done lived. Right. Your legacy. You left these actions behind mm. for people to speak on. When they great actions, you speak on them. When a man dies and he's left the world with great actions, we speak on his great action. We give him holidays. So how is it that we can speak when they great, but not when they fail, when they shamed because he died a dope fiend? Yeah. Because he was killed by his own set. I wonder why nobody talks about the fact that Nipsey Hussle was killed. He was a rolling 60, killed by a rolling 60, in the presence and in the hood of rolling 60s. Nobody speaks about that. Why wouldn't the people be mad at rolling 60s? Why don't nobody shame the 60s? Wow. Why don't nobody talk about the fact that this man had made it out of the ghetto, but because he couldn't let go of the hood, it became his demise. Wow. He got killed in front of a stove. With niggas standing around. So when you look at Nipsey Hussle. He died shameful. In the hood nigga. By his own set. Wow. When you look at Irmis. 
octagon or whatever his name is, you see a remarkable young man who his woman speak highly of, who his mother speak highly of, said he had a different kind of energy, a glow, an array about himself before he passed. And then this seven-year-old kid comes up to the microphone before the world and says, last night, Irmis came to me in a dream, and he was in heaven. Whoa, this is a kid talking. Fuck what Farrakhan them saying. Fuck what Stevie Wonder singing about. Fuck what Anthony Hamilton just sung. This seven-year-old kid, what did he see in that dream? He saw Irmis. So it hit me in the middle of that funeral we in this motherfucker smoking weed with Nip, listening to this foolish music they playing at this man's funeral. When I walked down in front of the family, they wasn't there for Nip, homie. They was mourning the fact that Irmis is gone. They wow. wasn't smoking weed like us. Wow. So I, I left knowing nothing about Nipsey and learning everything about Irmis. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk.